here. Today we have a 56 plate Deu Matiz and we're going to remove the factory fitted radio from it. Now it's a nice quick simple job to do on these, it's just a little bit confusing if you've not done one before. You're going to need a, some sort of plastic scraper or bojo tool as I'm using here which is quite a hard plastic. Do not use metal, you will damage the trim. Now you're going to start, so basically start by rising away at the bottom here. Now some are really stubborn and you're going to have to sort of pull at the sides, just sort of pull at the bottom corner and it'll all tug out. Now if you've got a loose one like this one, the whole lot's just fallen out so it literally lifts away. You're probably going to have to prise at it a bit more than that. I say this was quite an easy one to do. Now on the back of here, there you go, you've got your switches to unplug, yeah? your hazard warning light and your trip switch. They're like a little push squeezy connector so all you, all you do, there we go, you shove the pin and it'll work loose. Yeah? Come on. And there we go, like I say, you just, just squeeze the little plastic lug on the connector there and it'll pop off. The bigger one's a bit more awkward and there's the back of your, your trim where you've unplugged it from. Put that safely to one side, you are going to need that, it's a big part of your dashboard there. And you're left with uh, basically a Phillips screw, crosshead screw, one here, one, where are we, just there, look, on the other side. Undo both those screws and your radio and the pocket will all come forwards. Okay, so those two screws at the top there are undone. Now you can go to your hidden sunken ones down here. There's one each side and it's a Phillips. So again, straight down there and also down the other side. Long Phillips screwdriver, magnetic one required for those. So with all four screws removed, top ones and bottom ones, you can pull your plastic pocket out. It's separate, look. Keep that to one side and then you can actually pull your radio forwards. Now be careful because it has got big metal brackets on the side that will scratch your dashboard. So put some foam padding or something under it before you put it down. On the back you've got your standard ISO connector which will plug directly into your aftermarket wiring loom that comes with your radio. And you've got a standard push fit aerial. Just unplug it as so. So there you're left with the plug from the back of the radio, the power and the speed plug and the aerial. Just like I say, pulled out the back of the radio. Next thing you're going to have to do is remove these side brackets because you're going to need them for your new radio. So you've got a little TX20 or 25 there. I'll update you when I actually figure it out. I think it's a TX20. Take those off the side, off the side of the radio. You're going to have to put them on your new one. Right, just to update this, uh, they're being a bit awkward. You've got a TX20 for the front screw and a TX25 the rear so we've got two uh, two torx drives here so take both of those out on both sides and take your plates off okay so we've plugged your power cable in that comes with the radio and this particular one's got a, a it's a bluetooth microphone so we've run a little microphone cable all the way down underneath the dashboard and then it goes up the screen pillar and across and comes out near the mirror here the reason I put them near the mirror instead of on the top right hand corner of the window screen is because when you open your driver's side window the noise from the air rushing past can interfere with the, uh, you know, the microphone picking up your voice clearly. So your radio will come with a cage around it like this. You're going to need to remove that. Just pull these little tabs up and uh, slide the cage off as such. You only need it for European fitment cars, so put it back in the box and keep it just in case you sell your car and keep your radio. Yeah, You're going to need that for other cars. This particular car, you're not going to need it because you're going to be putting your side brackets on that you just took off from the original radio. We'll do that now. Right, just as a quick side note, depending on what radio you fit in, you may have to beat these little lugs flush. Yeah? They stick out and make the thing not line up properly. On this particular one, I've had to beat both those flush and also this screw. Okay, so it sits nice and flush on the radio if I do that. You'll have to line it up yourself and see which ones fit and which ones don't. I'll show you what I mean actually on the radio itself. And so, there we go, fits nice and flush up against the metal look. There you go, one counter sunk screw and one flat one. These screws normally come in the packet with the radio, if you buy like a Pioneer, Kenwood, Sony, JVC, etc. If not, you're going to have to find something a little bit similar because the original screws will not fit. So once you've done that and you've got your mounts on the right way, make sure they're not upside down, you've got to bear that in mind, so your big tabs to the top, you can go ahead and connect everything into the back of the radio. Like so. Microphone power and also your aerial shoved in. Once you've done that, uh, lift, make sure your auxiliary cables stay up top out of the way, you don't want those uh, falling down below it. You can quite literally just shove it in, line up the holes like so, it's got little pegs to mount. Put your screws back in, all four, which we'll do now. Don't forget your little pocket. Pocket uh, just slides, slides in as well there. Now put your screws in. 
Okay, so when you've got all four screws back in and your pocket lined up, yeah, just uh, put your ignition on and tune your radio into a radio station, preset it on a button and basically store it. Turn your ignition off, take the key out, count to five, okay? Once you've done that, put your key back in, switch back on again and just make sure the radio comes back onto the preset that you've tuned in, yeah? If it does, then your memory is good and you can leave it at that, which... There it is, smooth radio. So now you're left with putting your dashboard back in. Very, very straightforward. It's just the reverse of how you took it out. Don't forget to clip both these back in. You've got your hazard warning light switch and your trip computer reset switch. And then we'll push it all forwards and uh, clip it back in. Okay, so there we go. Both shoved back in, clipped home, yeah? Then get hold of your, your dashboard, quite literally. Watch your uh, stalk control there, look right near it. Make sure your wire doesn't trap behind it where the heat event is. Just uh, move that out of the way. And then simply but firmly tap it all home again. Just make sure they're all lined up, you don't want to break any clips. There we go, all the way around, nice and flush. Put your radio front back on. You've took that off so you don't scratch it, obviously. Right way round it out, there we go. And that is how you fit a radio in a day um it is. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments below. And, uh, you know, if it did help you in any way, click like on your way out. Thanks a lot. Goodbye for now.